last touch by Doobie. And Anderson's one of these guys who has been more prolific from three point range than inside the arc. And there you see it. 168 to compared to 127. Nice pass here. Anderson to Boone who lays it in. He's got four and the UConn lead is 11. Boone the 10th leading scorer in the Big East averaging 15 per game. Doobie defended by Williams. Doobie a member of the Big East all rookie team last year. Here's Wigan spinning on Anderson. Kick out water strap for three. Anderson's rebound. UConn out rebounding Rutgers 16-10. Williams to Brown. Low block Villanueva wants to go water strap. No he doesn't. He finds Boone. Villanueva's passing ability was evident last year. Apparently to me it was probably the best thing he did. But now boy I'll tell you post to post passing there have been four passes like that by Villanueva in this game. Two baskets and two mess ups by Boone. So those two guys really working well together. UConn with nine assists on their 12 field goals. The jumper by Wigan is blocked by Brown. Here comes Williams ahead, but nobody open there. That was like throwing into double coverage. Doobie leaves for Webb. Dribbles by Brown, tries to go at Boone. That wasn't such a good idea, was it? Boone jumped after the guard. An easy block for him. Brown for three. Got it. That's UConn basketball right there. The intensity is back. Jim put a lot of substitutes in and they lost it for a bit. But the intensity for the Huskies is back and they are solid in the break. Gary Waters has used three timeouts in the first nine minutes and 19 seconds. Well, when things are coming down like this, you got to find something. Williams throws behind him, which is a very nice play. And inside, Charlie Villanueva displaying his passing ability. He's triple teamed here. Boone gets the easy one. Doing everything right are the Huskies at this moment. A 10-0 UConn run has resulted in the biggest lead of the afternoon. 16 points. Villanueva, interesting, Bob, preseason nominee for the Naismith and Wood National Player of the Year awards, yet not selected by the Big East coaches on either the preseason first or second team all conference squad. Yes, well, somebody's wrong. And right. uh, I think if you, if you look early in the year, you would say, why would this guy be on that list at all? If you think about his accolades coming in, you would think he would be on the list. And I think now we've reached the middle point where his accolades are starting to come up to his, his performance is coming up to his accolades now and he's he's fulfilling the promise that he had once had coming in here 15 points 12 rebounds against Rutgers and UConn 75 74 win in Piscataway last January 6th Wigan tries to go past Anderson instead settles for the pull up I'll tell you Wigan had 23 against Georgetown his career high they're going to need somebody to step up it might as well be him Anderson not showing a reluctance to shoot when it's available now two of six from the floor UConn by 14 as we reach the midway point of the first half glad you've joined us for Big East basketball on a Saturday afternoon in Hartford Anderson's shooting woes have nothing to do with shot selection. He's taking good shots. I mean, he doesn't force much. He's open when he's taking them. They're just not going down. And his slump is not a good thing for this team. They need outside shooting. Doobie for three. Long rebound to Williams. Here's a three on two if they hurry. Make it a four on two. And Villanueva on the right wing gets the basket. Too much jogging by the guys in red on the way back. Three guys hit half court and they were jogging. Should be sprinting. And when you don't sprint back, you give up easy shots. Joins picked up two fouls early and sat down. He's back in. Gary Waters figures if we're going to stay in this thing, I need my best people. Wigan wants to go on Denham Brown. Shoots over him. Rebound for Sean Anderson. His third of the day. Well, Rutgers has used four guards this year. That's their best offensive <laughs> Boone passing neatly out of the double team. Brown draws foul number three on Byron Joins. Jim Calhoun's got most of the answers so far today. Gary Waters Club in a heap of trouble. Somewhere. But it's the triple team by Rutgers. Somebody missing an assignment. This has happened five times in the game so far. Post to post passing right here. Another good one. Boone to Denham Brown. 
and Joins and Bailey are not experienced enough to know when to double and when not to double. Villanueva's passing has been great, as has Boone's. Rutgers not solving that dilemma right now. I think what's happening is, Bob, they're tripling instead of doubling and leaving the weak side wide open. No guard drop, no extra guy on the weak side, and it's been disastrous for the Scarlet Knights so far. Joins has to sit down again after picking up his third foul, five on the team. Gary Waters told me this might be the most athletic team Jim Calhoun has had. Everybody can run and everybody can jump. What they need is for more guys to be able to shoot. And I think when you're in Jim Calhoun's position, you're not thinking short term. You're thinking NCAA tournament. You're thinking national championship. And with those things in mind, athleticism is great, but you got to put the ball in the basket more consistently than they've been in several games this year. Yeah, they're 10th in the league in field goal shooting, but 58% so far today. Deep three, no good. Rebound kept alive, and Anderson comes away with it. That's his fifth rebound. Inside boom gives low to Brown blocked from behind by Jimmy Inglis and here comes Wigan. Well that was a better play by Rutgers right there. They double teamed and kept somebody on the weak side as a result. No hoop. And we'll get the travel call on the start of the Knights. Only the third turnover on Rutgers. We are at the Civic Center in downtown Hartford. I'm Bob Picozzi along with Bob Wenzel. Glad you've joined us for Big East action. The Huskies out shooting Rutgers 56% to 23 percent well the difficulty for Rutgers obviously everyone knows the inside they're inexperienced and new there those guys are getting an education in the paint Gay yeah, with a spin move inside and he'll draw the foul Rudy this Gay, will be on Bailey I'm sorry Rudy Gay's game has much tighter than it was earlier in the year he relied more on his athleticism than anything and of course he's a great athlete but really, he seems to me in the last several games that, you know, he didn't have great numbers against Oklahoma, but he really battled well. He's growing as a player here. His game is much tighter. He's doing a lot of things well. He doesn't look as out of control to me as he did some in the early season. Anderson will get a rest, replaced by Kellogg Villanueva back in. Anderson with five points and five rebounds in the first 11 minutes. You know, and when you're a shooter like him, and we've outlined the fact that he's not shooting well for the season so far, you get five points and five rebounds. Sometimes you concentrate on the other things, and then the shooting comes automatically when you're not thinking of it so much. Maybe a little overthink by Rashad now. Jim Calhoun had a good line this week. He said to Rashad Anderson, remember the guy who used to guard Ben Gordon? He's now guarding you. <laughs> the best person or defender. There's the three by Ricky Shields, who has had a very slow start his first field goal. You're right, Rashad getting a lot of attention now. Kellogg out top to Denim Brown. And he'll reset the offense. That for Shields was his 32nd three of the season, third most in the Big East. He's second all time on the Rutgers list. Going away with the miss and Shields with the rebound. Here's a two on one if they hurry. Doobie right at Kellogg. Timeout, Jim Calhoun. He didn't like that at all. Well, what and they I had. Believe, I'm sorry, I believe that uh, Kellogg is the target of his rap. <laughs> well, he's target. At, but, but what happened was they had only one guard in the game, Kellogg. Everybody else was a swing. The next the next guy was Brown, and he's really a swing man. So those guys not ready to get back defensively, and they did a very poor job of getting back right there. He, Ricky Shields, one of the most prolific three-point shooters in the Big East. Well, he likes it off the dribble, and right there, that is a tough shot. But, you know, sometimes guys who shoot like him, they use the dribble to get their rhythm. It's no accident. He's been there for a long time. He's a senior, 14th leading scorer in the history of the school is Ricky Shields. And, of course, Jeff Billett. Who you coached. Yes, I recruited, you recruited and, coached. and coached. Great young man. He leads that school in three-point shooting. Ricky Shields moving up. Ever wonder, Bob, why couldn't they uh, introduce the three-point rule when I was playing? <laughs> <laughs> Meaning you. Went, uh, during your days at Rutgers. It would have been nice. It really would have been nice. Filling away with the acrobatic move inside. He's got six. And 
Here's Doobie defended by Marcus Williams. Rutgers six and six in the year, 0 and two in the league. Lost a heartbreaker in overtime to Pittsburgh last Saturday, and then blew a 10-point second-half lead Tuesday at Georgetown. Bailey inside fakes Boone, and I think he's going to draw the foul on Boone before Villanueva swats the shot away. The foul will be on Boone. Villanueva's done a lot of swatting at both ends. He's got six points. UConn by 16. Quick download on the all-new Hyundai Tucson. Loaded with features inside and out, like standard side impact and side curtain airbags. A standard electronic stability program that helps you make... Five Big East games being played on this Saturday afternoon. Elsewhere around the conference, Pittsburgh beats Seton Hall by four. Syracuse, 3-0 in the league with an eight-point lead over Providence second half. Villanova with an 11-point first-half lead at home over Georgetown. That is surprising since Frazier and Sumter both out. Notre Dame with a two-point lead over St. John's. As you mentioned, Jason Frazier breaking his hand. His bad luck of injuries continues. Sumter already out. And what a night, what a nightmare. For Villanova on their trip home from Providence, they had to have an emergency crash landing or prepare for it in Providence. Oh, my goodness. Look at this. UMass having beaten Connecticut now beats GW. Kentucky big time over Georgia. Georgia's maybe the worst team in the SEC this year. And two guys entering the Big East next year squaring off today. Oklahoma State having a little trouble with Iowa State. And that's the game of the day right there. That game at Wake Forest. Two heavyweights going at it. And later on, in the Big Ten, Minnesota, Iowa. Of course, UConn will play North Carolina here in Hartford later in the season. Providence, no wins so far in the Big East. 0-2 are the Friars with the preseason Big East Player of the Year and Ryan Gomes, and Williams hits the run. Nice pull-up. Body control, don't take it all away when people come and help. Use that pull-up in the lane shot. Most point guards need it. Williams with four points and six assists already in the first 14 minutes. UConn by 16. Huskies overall nine and three coming off the loss at Oklahoma on Monday. Interesting, Gay is guarding Shields right here, Bob. Longer to try to challenge that three-point shot that Shields like to use off the dribble. Shot clock down to five and Toby with the deep three. <laughs> oh my goodness, the follow-through is still as he backs up. Williams penetrates, ball goes right through Villanueva's hands. Gay gives to Villanueva, this time Charlie catches it. And the foul. It'll be on Doobie. The passing of UConn today is something to behold. Lots of unselfishness on the part of these guys, playing very well. They just lost at Oklahoma, and now coming into this game, wanting to show that they can bounce back. They're bouncing back well. Gay to Villanova, unselfish play. Charlie protects the basketball and goes up. Body between him and the defender. Misses the free throw. The Huskies three of seven from the foul line today. Already with 40 points, still 520 remaining first half. UConn averages 82 points per game. Tough for the Rutgers guards, Doobie and Shields especially. They're used to shooting the basketball. The guys inside are open, so you really pass the ball. That's the natural thing, but nothing happening in the pack for Rutgers. Rebound inside Waterstrad, and his putback was out of bounds. Let's take a look now at our Hyundai Cool Facts. Gary Waters Club with the second toughest non-league schedule among the teams in the Big East. They've already played 23rd ranked Wisconsin in non-league play. Charlotte, St. Mary's, who most people think is going to be in the NCAA tournament. The one that sticks in their craw is Penn State at home the loss. They don't usually lose at home very much unless a team is ranked. Going away with the miss, Webb with the rebound. As Wigan Wright, up top water strap. Down low, English. Good ball fake. It's by Villanueva, but missed the shot. Gets his own rebound. Another good fake. Missed again. And a travel violation will be called on Waterstrad as he comes down with the rebound. Gary Waters in his fourth year at Rutgers. Believes in trying to play as tough a schedule as possible. And this would illustrate that. 
Well, I'll tell you what, playing a tough non-conference schedule for some teams is good, for some teams is not good. Depends on the experience of your group. Yep. Depends on a lot of different things. So scheduling, very involved. And I'll tell you what, with a young team like this, I'm not sure it's a great idea to play a tough schedule like that for Rutgers. Coming off a great season in 2004, they went to the finals of the NIT. They were 20 and 13. Yet to get to the NCAA tournament in Gary's time there. And that is what they are aiming at. They're playing 14 teams this year who played in either the NCAA or NIT last season. They have one non-league game left against Arkansas Monticello. Did you play Arkansas Monticello when you coached? No, I did not. I did not. Played UNLV a couple of times in Missouri, though. Had some good times with those games. Shields penetrates, and here comes Kellogg. Three on two. This is the shot. Here comes Webb. The other end gets by Anderson and lays it in. So Rutgers pulls within 13. Kellogg up top to Anderson. Three and a half remaining first half. Kellogg on the wing again. What I'm seeing from the Rutgers inside guys right here is a little, certainly not performance, but no give up in those guys. Inglis, and, and you know, he's really getting after it. Bailey, they're being aggressive in there, just not being able to get anything done. The break has been good to Rutgers in the last few minutes. Sure was on back-to-back -back baskets. That time Wigan, the break triggered by the missed three-pointer from the wing by Anderson. All of a sudden, the lead is 11. UConn big guys getting a little lazy in terms of getting back right now on defense. Rutgers finding a way to score because in the half court, they've been coming up empty, but in the break, got an opportunity there. Williams spins around the Boone screen, missed the shot, but it's tipped in by Villanueva. Out of his area. The long arms of Villanueva coming into play there. He's got 10 points, so he's in double figures for the seventh time this year and the 20th time in his career. On the drive, Shields, left side Inglis for the jumper. So he missed the putbacks inside and hits the tough contested shot with Villanueva's face in his hand. Hand in his face, that would be. Well, he's a junior college player and learning the rigors of the Big East. I'll tell you what, it's a little shock when you're going along okay and then you run into the physicalness of Pittsburgh in your first game and then go down to Georgetown and run into that group and then here. That is an education. Kellogg penetrates, sets up Williams, return pass to Kellogg. Down low, Boone over English. Josh Boone already with eight points this afternoon. Shields catch and shoot from the left wing. Rebound going to Wava, his fourth. Inside the two minute mark. UConn by 13. Williams gets the ball back. Looks inside. This guy's vision, you say, look, his vision is very, very good. You know, he's got an excellent passer, sees the floor. I'll tell you what, to be able to see things before is what makes a good point guard. Misses the three. Rebound pulled down inside by Ricky Shields. Both teams look a little fatigued to me right now. They're caught in kind of in half-step situation. Rutgers would try to get a little bit of a spurt here at the end to give them some confidence going into the locker room. Wigan up top to Shields. No pressure by UConn here. Just staying in front of their men. We still haven't had our four minutes ago media timeout as we hit the one-minute mark in the half. Inside English, great fake got Boone up off his feet. That is unusual for Boone. He usually waits until his opponent leaves, then he jumps. Solid play by Rutgers here, getting it back to workable margin at 11. English, a transfer from Eastern Oklahoma State. He's from St. Lucia. Weather today here in Hartford a little bit different than it is back home in St. Lucia, I'd imagine. Inside the 30-second mark in the half, UConn by 11. Down low, Villanueva, jump hook, tipped in by, oh, Boone, the second one goes in. 12 points. Repetitive jumping by Boone on the boards. That is effort, Bob. That's what he is made of. If there's anything that Josh Boone reflects is continuous effort. Shot clock is off, so we're going to hit halftime without ever getting to that four-minute media timeout. Wiggins with the drive over Boone, and that should end the half. It will count as it goes, does not, but a very strong first half for Jim Calhoun's defending national champions.
Josh Boone with 10 points. Charlie Villanueva with 10 points. Rudy Gay with 10 points. The Huskies shoot 50% from the floor. They out-rebound Rutgers, and they have themselves a 46-35 lead at halftime. The starters of UConn. Going away to let the way early. Offensive rebounding prowess. Getting it done on the offensive boards is Villanueva. Boone on the acceptance from Rashad Anderson. He also had 10. Rudy Gay also had 10. Lots of post-to-post -post passing for UConn inside. And their dominance in the paint has been very evident. Rutgers, the bombs have not always been there. Shields right here. That's his only basket of the first half. Doobie has nine points. And you measure this one. That's from a different area code. Webb has helped with nine points, but the outside shooting has not been there for Shields. UConn controlling the paint by a tune of 32-14. What will happen in the next 20 minutes? Let you know after this. UConn trying to make it 12 out of its last 13 over Rutgers. Up by 11 as we check out the first half statistics. And we mentioned the points in the paint stat, Bob. Well, that's the biggest thing, 32-14. to 14. The inside guys, Villanova, Boone, and Gay getting it done. 30 points between them. Marquise Webb really helping Rutgers out with nine points. Doobie with nine. And, of course, we mentioned the inside players. What is not in there is that Shields is one for four with only three points. And he is their second leading scorer and the guy that they rely upon. He's going to have to get hot for them to have a chance. Things could be worse. They were down 18, only 11 to start the second half. Not too bad. Inglis gets the start with Joins still on the bench with three fouls. And here comes Marcus Williams who had six first half assists. Williams to Boone. Williams had a career high and UConn record 16 assists against Central Connecticut. He played his best game in their loss to Oklahoma. Not only passing and doing the things he normally does, but scoring as well. Boone misses the shot inside. Might have been a little bit too far under the hoop. And here comes Doobie the other way. Doobie pull up three. Rebound, going away to his fifth. Of all the teams in the Big East for Rutgers to match up, I think this is the, the most difficult for them. They do have physical inside post players, but they're not very tall. And against UConn's team, it's going to be tough for them. Boone feeds the slashing Williams, who can't get it to go, but he does draw the foul. First team foul of the second half on the Scarlet Knights. More good passing. Williams moving without the basketball and of course no shot blocking inside last year Rutgers had Lama Zana who was an excellent shot blocker this year last in the league in shot blocking so that has been an adjustment for their team Jim Calhoun recruiting Marcus Williams out of Crenshaw High School in Los Angeles that's where he also got one of his outstanding point guards from the 90s, Kevin Ollie. I didn't know that. Ollie went to uh, East from L.A., huh? Hmm. Also, first the high school where Darryl Strawberry played. He's still in the NBA. Not Strawberry, you mean Ollie. <laughs> <laughs> Darryl's son is playing for Gary Williams in Maryland. Absolutely. Martin Good experience left. right here for Gay to try to guard a guy on the perimeter. Of course, in high school, we always regard the biggest guy in the other team. Learning how to play oh, ball. Shields, it looked like Anderson was an excellent defensive position, but he threw it up right in his face. Well, the value of three-point shooting, you keep shooting them in Rutgers' position. Now we got an answer, a three for a two, though, so it's a plus one for Rutgers on that exchange. Boone's got a dozen. Penetration. Dumps it out to Shields, defended by Anderson. Boone now in double figures for the 11th time this season. Shields is one of those guys, if you guard him well at the three-point line, he just backs up and shoots from there. He can do it from deep. Inglis at the high post, gives for, to Webb and then sets the screen for him. Webb shot blocked by Anderson. Shot clock at seven. Inglis showing the nice touch. I'll tell you what, he's going to be a starter pretty soon. He gets a little bit more done than Joins does. Capable shooter. Joins gives him some power, but no scoring. Low block Villanueva, and he's fouled from behind by Ali Bailey, who's really being welcomed to the post play in the Big East this afternoon. Yeah, Bailey started out the season great. He was rookie of the week twice, but it was against weaker competition. And now in the Big East, 
he's really struggling in his first three games. He's got three fouls. Two team fouls on the start of night. Shields for another three. Rebound. Bailey tries to tip to himself. Last touch by UConn. A fresh 35 on the shot clock for Rutgers. There's a look at Rudy Gay out of Archbishop Spalding High School in Baltimore. As Anderson will sit down. Replaced by Denham Brown. Well, those two guys are terrific outside shooters, Anderson and Brown. And, of course, Jim Calhoun trying to figure out which one is giving him the best shooting this year. He's going to work with both. Well, he's tried every move in his repertoire to get that up and over Villanueva. Rebound number six for Villanueva. Gay left side finally missed the shot. He hit his first four. And we'll get a rebound foul on the Scarlet Knights. I think this one's on Webb. Webb was holding a little bit. Uh, Denham Brown had position on the weak side, Bob, so all he could do. First on Webb, three on the team. Inbound to Gay, missed another shot. Rebound Inglis. Here's a two on one. Shields over Denham Brown. And Jim Calhoun wants tie. For Rutgers, their ninth and tenth fast break points of the afternoon. They trailed by as many as 19. All of a sudden, it's only six. What are you holding now? A six-pack. A six-pack? Brilliant! What'd you do? Well, I figured out how to carry six... ...national finals, losing to eventual national champion UCLA in a real shootout. A regional final in Oakland. Rutgers is back in it because Shields is back in it. Shields had three points at halftime. He scored five points already in the second half in the early going, a three and a two. They need him desperately to continue that. Marcus Williams penetrates, shot partially blocked by Newby, and nobody put a body on Rudy Gay. Bob, I'm not sure if you put a body on it, that would have made any difference on that one. Maybe wow. handcuffs. Wild shot by Newby, went up and over the backboard. That would have been the Ian Horse. <laughs> well, he had to shoot it high, being challenged by the big horses, as you say, of UConn. UConn led by as many as 19. Rutgers trimmed it to six. Now it's eight. Huskies have never trailed. They scored the game's first eight. Brown. Oh, tries to pass down low to Villanueva. It's blocked by Jones and the putback by Boone. Two dunks in a row on plays where Rutgers forced a miss. The value of offensive rebounding and talent. Boone now with a dozen points. We're going to step aside. The UConn lead is 10. The Huskies already with three players in double figures. One of them is freshman Rudy Gay. He's got a dozen. He's the most spectacular two of the 12. Have you ever started a car from across the road? Given your backseat passengers a tan? Or driven a four-door like a sports car? Introducing the first ever. Andy Etzel in the house today. His Huskies, of course, coming off the big win in the Motor City Bowl. And a great start to their life in 1A. Becoming a real force on the football map. No doubt about that. Country. What a job he's done. Former assistant with the Jaguars. Did I ever tell you I almost bought his house when he left? And uh, oh. I bought a different house. But I, I looked at his house. Yeah, very nice. He was uh, worked under Tom Coughlin down in Jacksonville. And he got very happy that he's here. He just signed a new long-term contract. A lot of that going around in the athletic department this week. <laughs> Denham Brown with the drive. And he'll draw the blocking foul. As the Huskies absolutely dominating that area inside. Well, they dominated on passing inside mostly. Here's a drill penetration and an offensive rebound. Offensive board prowess, one of the keys to this team. On any miss, they are there in spectacular fashion and in fundamental fashion. These guys get it done on the offensive boards. And there you see the story, 38 to 16. That's going to win most games. But credit Rutgers for hanging in, only down 11. Denham Brown, an 80% free throw shooter, makes one of two. Brown started the first five games of the year before losing that starting spot at the three spot on the floor to Rudy Gay. Probably going to be awfully tough to get it back. Marcus Williams with the hold on the perimeter. Well, what Denham Brown gave them in theory was great outside shooting. What Gay gives to them is shot blocking, another shot blocker, a slasher, a guy who can score in the paint. 
Denon Brown will have a great impact on this team, I feel, as the season goes on. They will need his shooting against certain teams that they play against in the Big East Conference. And, of course, they need everybody, actually, to be the best you can possibly be. But Gay gives them a little something different. Calhoun also loves Brown's ability to guard the ball. Down low, a little jump hook action by Joins, who re-enters. He's been on the bench with three fouls. Nine-point UConn lead. These two teams will meet again at the rack. Lewis Brown Athletic Center, February 19th. Last time Rutgers beat UConn was at the rack, January 30th, 2002. Down low, who touched it last? Evidently Villanueva did. I'm impressed with Waterstrat. He's done a great job for Gary Waters. He hustles in there. His body is just not devel developed enough to play as many minutes as he needs against big-time competition. I think he's going to be a good one for the Scarlet Knights. 6'11 freshman who used to be a soccer goalkeeper. Be tough to get by the ball by him with his wingspan. Williams with the block. Boone to Gay. The one-touch pass to Williams. They can get it done in the break. There's no doubt about that. Doobie answers in transition. And Jim Calhoun may be auditioning for Randy Etzel's team as a place kicker. Just gave the U and the UConn club board a nice little boot on the sideline. Well, the only reason that Rutgers is in this game, Bob, is they're getting fast break baskets. There have been times when they've done it well. There have been times when UConn's been lazy getting back. Well, that time Wigan blew by Gay, but he didn't finish. Here's Marcus Williams to Gay. Down low, Boone wasn't ready for the ball. Turnover number seven for UConn. Tough pass to handle because they were too close together and the pass was low. A nice thought by Gay. Good unselfish play, but difficult to accomplish. Rutgers fifth in the Big East in turnover margin and Rutgers eighth in the country when it comes to the fewest turnovers committed. Well, how about that game against Pittsburgh? Only three turnovers in the entire game. Tied a Big East record. They've been another game where they only had five. So they've handled the ball very, very well, and they need to. But they need to get outside shooting. Waterstat looking a little tired right now. Denham Brown catch and shoot from the right. Rebound fought for joins in Villanueva. The hell ball. Arrow pointing toward Utah. And we'll get a fresh 35 on the shot clock. Well, you talked about how good Rutgers is in taking care of the basketball. Look at these three guys. Assist to turnover ratio, very, very good. And they play with those three most of the minutes. Very impressive numbers for the Rutgers guards in terms of taking care of the basketball. Gary Waters is telling me that that was always one of the things he stressed at Kent State, taking care of the ball, and has continued it here. Off the inbound, Denham Brown gets the basket and the foul. Is there year in, year out, Bob? Is there a team in the country that gets better, more easy looks off inbound passes under their own basket than UConn? I'll tell you what, when you have guys that can fly to the basket, too, Denham Brown, that was a fall asleep on the weak side kind of play, but also you can lob the ball to the middle of the lane when you have guys like they've had. Antonio Kellogg checks into the lineup for the Huskies. Well, there are three starters on the bench right now. Kellogg, Denham Brown, and Ed Nelson in the game right now as subs. That is the depth of UConn. Shields barely draws iron on that deep three. Here comes Kellogg. To Anderson on the left. No good, and no one put a body on Boone again. He's making it look easy, and it is easy when no one checks you out. Well, Joins tried to check him out that time. Really, Joins went up to him, and Boone slid past him with a nice quick move like a defensive alignment uses when he's attacking the quarterback. Really did a solid job there. Kellogg deflecting the pass out of bounds. Boone now with 16 points, seven rebounds, and with Emeka Okafor gone in the NBA, Boone has much more room to operate, and it's reflected in the numbers. Well, he has blossomed. There's no doubt about that. Early in the season, I think it was a surprise to many people the kind of numbers he was getting. They knew that he was, you know, the other guy besides Okafor, but he's done a tremendous job of improving his offensive stuff. And Boone with the nice catch in the open floor, and the dish to Anderson it was all set up by Kellogg's initial pass. 
Wiggins tries to come back the other way. Kellogg knocks it loose. Kick out Shields for three. Rebound Boone is eight. There was almost too much celebrating on Connecticut on that one. Almost gave up an easy one on the way back. Anderson trying to make it a 19-point lead, but misses badly. Here's a four-on-one Rutgers break. Wiggins for the pull-up. And it's tipped up and in by Waterstrap. I'm telling you, man, this kid is getting something done out there. Great hustle, 94 feet by the 6'11 freshman. Bucket to bucket. Not bad for a guy who's learning his way around the Big East. Rutgers has numbers, a little bit of mishandling by Jewel Wigan, but Waterstat there to tip it in. The freshman getting his baptism. And you can scratch Jim Calhoun off that list of coaches who like the four-on-one break headed the other way. <laughs> he calls the timeout in a hurry. Well, they did. They have not been getting back, and credit Rutgers because they're pushing the ball when they get the opportunities. Josh Boone, of course, improving a great deal since last year. An afterthought in the offense. Look at the left and right columns. He's improved by 10 points a game. And look at the bottom. Free throws. Very interesting. 40 to 76 percent. His field goal percentage shooting is solid last year, solid this year. And his rebounding obviously improving. Playing a larger, larger role. And also, if you don't like all those stats, how about a little assist on the break? So Boone, his first assist of the day. Josh Boone, in his first 42 games in college, had no 20-point performances. In his next four games, he had four 20-point performances. <laughs> yeah, well, it's a matter of opportunity and stress and, and the kind of things that you improve on in the summer and your role on the team. Out of the UConn timeout, Kellogg to Ed Nelson, right side jumper. Displaying a little bit of range. Nelson had his best opportunity against Oklahoma, and he played like a warrior in that game against Taj Gray and Kevin Bookout. The UConn intensity picking up out of the timeout. Up 16. Rutgers having trouble getting the ball inside. Joins with a great hustle play, and he got the timeout before the hell ball. Great hustle by both teams. Joins is a little upset, but he hustled after it when he made the mistake and kept the Rutgers with an opportunity. The double team knocks it loose and Joins will be stripped, but here comes the hustle you were talking about. That is a great play by Joins to keep that ball in Rutgers' hands. Another big guy, Nelson on the floor. Bodies crashing everywhere, like what you like to see. Hustle. Gary Ward is stressing that to his group right here. When you're down, you're still in the game, however. Long time to go in this one. This was the best pressure half-court situation that UConn had all game. And the long arms of Boone poked it away. Denim Brown loses the, I mean, Kellogg loses the handle right here. And Nelson coming in for the fumble. Nelson is. ACC Rookie of the Year at Georgia Tech, and now Ed Corbett, John Cal, and Frank Scagliata are checking things out at the scorer's table. Well, I don't know what they're looking for right Could here. Be a I shot mean... clock reset, Bob, determining maybe whether the possession had ended, in which case well, Rutgers it... gets it back and be able to fresh 35. What do you think? Well, they would definitely get, yeah, I think they're definitely getting it back. This right way. now, the shot clock is reading 18. Ah, I see. I would have thought that that's a change in possession. The ball got loose. It was loose all over. I think you're right. They're only going to give him 18 seconds right here. They are going to both coaches to explain the situation. And there's a frown on Gary Waters face. So I'm sure that he would prefer to have 17 or 15 more seconds up here. But I don't think they're going to get it. Gary Waters told me we haven't rebounded consistently for our first 12 games. We need to do a much better job defending the interior. This is sort of a, Bob, an atypical Gary Waters team. I agree. It's not the sort of team that he likes. He's somebody that really stresses the defense. And this particular Rutgers team doesn't look like it's quite built to play the way he would like to play. At least not yet. Doobie takes it into the body of Nelson, doesn't get the foul. Joins does, though, on the putback. So the foul on Nelson will be his third, and two on the team. But his Huskies have a 16-point lead with 10.42 remaining. Fifth in the Big East in three-point field goal. Well, I'll tell you what, Shields can shoot from deep. When you guard him closely, he just backs up. 
Only three points in the first half. He's got five in the second half. And Quincy Duby, he uses the dribble very well. Nice glass move here for him. And this one is from very, very deep. He had nine points in the first half. Scoreless in the second half so far for Quincy Duby. Their numbers on the season, as you can see, they've made 64 of the team's 77 three-point shots against Kansas State. 25 and 21, 46 together in a big win on the road. And tonight they are not doing it. Both guys, solid players, but being defended well by the Huskies in this one, neither with big numbers. Scarlet Knights, four of 11 from three point range. This afternoon for the season, they are fifth best in the Big East at 34.8%. At the line is Byron Jones, who is a high school teammate of a fellow by the name of Carmelo Anthony, Towson Catholic, in Baltimore. Brown with the miss, rebound, Shields. Shields at 6'4", averages 4.8 rebounds per game, and that's number one on this Rutgers team. But it is not a very good rebounding Rutgers team. In fact, they're 10th in the Big East in rebounding margin. Well, that's one of those good news, bad news. Yeah. It's good news that he's getting that many, but bad news. You don't want your guard being a leading rebounder. To be defended by Marcus Williams. Penetrates, sets up Inglis. Jumper no good, Villanueva keeps it alive. Kellogg goes behind the back to get out of traffic and takes it all the way to the goal. Rebound Wigan. Here's Rutgers, four on two if they hurry. Doobie, turn the corner on Denham Brown. No doubt. Nice play by Doobie. He knows how to play in the open floor. Kellogg on that last possession, not very good play by him. Does not have a point guard's mentality yet. More of a two guard trying to play both point and two for this group. Round to the cutter, boom, inside the going away, though. Might have been blocked, but he gets it back himself. He's got a dozen, his first two points here in the second half. Villanueva and Boone just slapped hands on the way back, congratulating one another. When you get two guys as talented as them playing well in terms of passing in the paint, you got a good thing going. Down low, joins, backs into Villanueva who tried to draw the charge, but couldn't. Well, I'll tell you what though, you know, when you talk about the goods and the bads and the evaluation of players, Villanueva and Boone you'd love to have, but they are not physical. I mean, in terms of their body, they play physically for the physicalness that they have. But against Bookout and, uh, and Taj the other night, they really got banged around a little bit. Still young in terms of their bodies, both only sophomores. Boon with only three rebounds in 22 minutes. Counted in the foul. Slowly, slowly, Rutgers chipping away right here, staying within striking distance, and this is dangerous stuff. They've done a great job of penetration in this game in the semi-fast break. And right there, an acrobatic play by Shields. And he's going to go to the free throw line. He's 71% from there. But they are hanging around. And, and what's bad for UConn in this kind of a situation is that they are a good three-point shooting team, Rutgers is. Shields and Duby at any moment could get hot. They have a history of making threes in end games. Shields made one with .4 to go against Pittsburgh to send it to overtime. Going away, the catches in traffic, lost the ball. Who touched it last? John Cow looks for some help from his colleague Ed Corbett, and he says, let's stay down this end. It's Jim Calhoun's team's ball. We're at the Hartford Civic Center. Glad you've joined us for Big East action. Bob Picozzi along with Bob Wenzel. UConn is led by as many as 19. Rutgers has crept within six. And right now, the UConn lead is back up to a dozen. Huskies have led from wire to wire so far. Williams from behind the Villanueva screen. And what a box out by Bailey enabled his teammate Waterstrat to get the rebound. Wigan. Left side web. Up top to Wigan. Tries to dribble by Gay to Shields, and he lost the handle over the end line for the Scarlet Knights, only their seventh turnover. Rutgers still looking for its first conference win. They got an uphill road to get it. With Vito team, plays in all kinds of international stuff. I would expect him to have a good season this year as the season wears on. He's going to become an important player. Williams. To Nelson. Nelson should shoot that. He can make that shot from in the elbow there. Nelson sets a heck of a screen for Williams. Kick out to Brown. Shot clock at one. He beats the clock. And here's a two on two the other way. 
Wigan has Doobie spotting up for the three instead to the cutter Webb. Rutgers has handled fast break situations in this game very well, Bob. You talked about their ball handling ability and the fact they don't turn the ball over very much. They are converting on the fast break opportunities that they're getting. Wigan, beautiful bounce pass, filling the lanes properly. That's exactly what you want. And Webb, the beneficiary. Only a 10-point game, six minutes to go in this one. Rutgers hanging in and hanging in and hanging in. And they're not doing it with three-point shooting, which is what we thought would happen. They're doing it with execution in the fast break. Jenna Brown on the right. Low post, middle and away, but backs in on Waterstrat. Jump hooks over him, rebound joins. But he lost it over the baseline. It's interesting that Waterstrat gives them a different kind of post player. The other guys are all kind of physical, a little shorter, and not lengthy. But Waters using Dan in there gives him a more lengthy post guy. He's challenging shots better than the other players. Call it the cutters, call it the cutters. So UConn inbounds with a fresh 35 in the shot clock beneath their own hoop. Anderson back in for the Huskies. Boone will return at the next whistle. The zone has also slowed the pace of the game down, which is like Rutgers would like that. UConn not getting quick shots, not crashing the offensive boards, taking them much longer to get a shot. Now they switch back to man-to-man. -to -man. Anderson down low, little the way, but for the jump hook. Joins with the box out, but he never got the ball. Nice play by Gary Hustle on the boards. Villanueva looks a little weak in these last couple of minutes. I don't know if he's tired or not. Last game, he bent his knees and exploded. Now it looks like he's playing a little bit straight up. Only two points in the second half for Villanueva after getting 10 in the first. Bad shot. Rebound, Nelson loses it. Williams, boy, this, this possession, Bob, has lasted longer than the Gerald Ford administration. <laughs> <laughs> well, right now, Rutgers back to man-to-man. -to -man. UConn would prefer to play against man-to-man -man then zone. Now back into their regular offense, screening on the baseline. A 1-4 set, Williams finds Gag. That's it, they like. The mid-distance jumper, did you see the rotation on that basketball? Perfect form, but Rutgers coming back strong again. Rudy Gay with 14 points for the Huskies. Here comes Williams. And the Huskies can't get anything in transition. So Williams will walk it up the floor with 422 remaining. Gives to Anderson. Catch and shoot. No good. Rebound Doobie. Here comes Rutgers. Two on two. Doobie to Webb on the wing. Uh-uh. Offensive foul. Anderson positioned himself well. Rutgers running a straight three on two. Right here, two guys back. Anderson in perfect position. That is what you want to do to prevent a break. Second foul on Webb and six on Rutgers. Boone re-enters. 18 points, 11 rebounds. So he has his ninth double-double of the year, Bob, and sixth double-double in his last eight games. That is playing, believe me. Rutgers with nine turnovers. UConn only seven. UConn, that is very good for them. Usually turn the ball over a lot more than that because they're a fast-paced team. Huskies eighth in the Big East in turnover margin. I don't think they're overly concerned with that. Kind of like a college football team that doesn't worry too much about penalties. A lot of times the teams most penalized are teams that win. So uh, I think UConn is, is sort of that theoretically. Right. What you want to do is, when you're a slowdown type team, you don't want to turn the ball over. Amen. Anderson loses the ball. Here's Doobie and right in Williams' lap. Uh-oh, 2 on -oh 1 with Gay. The trailer of Villanueva back to Williams. Gay saying, throw it up to me, Marcus. I had a dunk. But no. But the decision was good. And the crowd responding as UConn opens up a 14-point lead with 3.20 remaining. Shield off balance three. Rebound inside to Webb. Webb is a glue guy. Webb brings it to the perimeter, misses the shot, and Boone runs down his 12th rebound. And you talk about rundown, Bob. You know, Boone, it, that's an interesting phrase because he not only gets the rebounds that are in the paint area, he hustles for a 6'11 guy. A play like that, go 
Hearts could have easily gotten that as well. Huskies playing today without 6'11 Hilton Armstrong, who sprained his knee Monday in Oklahoma. Villanueva sets up Boone. He's got 20 for the fifth time this year. He can pass it. The bald-headed magician. Gary Waters wants to talk things over with 2.44 remaining. UConn, whose 19-point lead was trimmed to as little as six, now back up by 16. Look away pass right here. Excellent play by Villanueva. Looking one way, passing the other, and Boone does the finish. Excellent passing by the Huskies. And now it's time for the greatest of Rutgers sport. We'll spotlight on a young man that you recruited and coached at Rutgers, Bob, Jeff Billett, and what a sharp shooter he was. Uh, he was an excellent shooter. Guy could move without the ball. Only 5'11". Guts and glory. I'll tell you what, he made a lot of end game plays to win games. He was a little guy, but he could really score. Jeff Billett, the all-time three-point field goal record holder. Third in assists also. And the all-rookie team in 1996, first year, Rutgers entered the league. The greatest of Rutgers sports is brought to you by Sitco, fueling the greatest of American sports. I'll never forget, Bob, the shot that Mr. Billet made at the buzzer to stun Georgetown in the quarterfinals of the Big East Tournament at Madison Square Garden. No doubt about that. He also beat St. John's in the Garden on a late game three, and West Virginia at West Virginia on a late game three. Now it's time for our Cooper Tire defensive player of the game. A fairly easy choice. No doubt about that. Josh Boone is your man. 12 rebounds and five blocks and innumerable at times holding the Rutgers post players, preventing them from scoring. Boone, member of the Big East All-Rookie Team last year, preseason second team all-conference entering his sophomore year. Out of the timeout, Rutgers ball, Oliver Bailey. Two-time Big East Rookie of the Week held in two points, no field goals. He has been struggling in his three Big East games. He's got to find some counter moves to the height that he's seeing. Manny Cazada checks in for Rutgers and misses badly on his first shot. Cazada, 6'2 freshman out of Washington Heights, the all-time leading scorer at St. Albans High School in Washington, D.C., a high school program with great tradition. And now UConn wants to work the clock, Bob. Well, that's a good thing for them to do right now. Up 16, they want to force Rutgers to come out and play man-to-man. -man. They prefer to play against man-to-man. -man. High pick and roll here with Boone and Williams. Shot clock at six. Denham Brown misses the three. Boone nearly controlled the rebound, but Joins comes away with it. Double team, steps out of it, and gives to Webb with a minute and a half remaining. UConn by 16. Oh, what a screen. Joins set. And Rudy Gay is left counting his teeth and other body parts. <laughs> Check out this pass from Villanueva to Josh Boone. The MVP the first time they did it. Bob, Chris Smith, the leading scorer in UConn history, 2,145 points. That is a lot of points. <laughs> He looks like he's intent right now, watching his alma mater take care of business. And he was without question the first important recruit for Jim Calhoun here at UConn as he landed the very best player in Connecticut out of Colby Cathedral High School in Bridgeport. And after that, UConn was very successful at continuing to get the best player in the state, Scott Burrell out of Hamden, Murray Williams. They've got the, the best Waterbury players from a lot of other states, yes, too, and a lot of other then. countries. You know, they're... <laughs> you know, Denim Brown. Sheffer and the Dove Hennefeld from Israel. Yep. Denim Brown out of Toronto. Los Angeles. Yep. Is that another country? <laughs> no, I think that's part of the U.S. Kevin Ollie. And Four corners right here. Hold the basketball. Play. Get one at the end. That is what they're trying to do. Big difference in the paint, obviously, in this one. What one would expect. Rutgers settling for a straight-up man-to-man. Well, right now, they're going to play it, not, not foul, and get into any shot clock. Kellogg has speed. Let's see if he can take Kazad off the bounce. Well, he lost the bounce himself. Here's Doobie, has Webb to his right. Gives it to him, and he's stripped by Kellogg. 
And he has Villanueva ahead, but instead wisely decides to milk the clock inside the final minute up 14. Especially after that last turnover. <laughs> he didn't want to risk another one and the wrath of Coach Calhoun, I'll give you that. Interesting game. Rutgers, a tough matchup for them right here. Six and six on the year, six and seven now after this one. Their inside guys are no match for UConn. It's not that many teams are. But they will get better as the season progresses. Doobie and Shields will be the men that they have to do as much offensive firepower as possible for Rutgers to have success. Shot clock down to two. Williams misses. Villanueva got He's got 14 to go along with 13 rebounds. And how about four assists for Villanueva as well? Inglis rejected by Boone. And for Josh Boone, that was his sixth block, his seventh block shot of the day. Let's take a look now at our Pontiac game-changing performance. We began the day talking about Charlie Villanueva. And we end the day speaking about him as well. Number three did a fabulous, fabulous job. Big numbers, double-double for Charlie Villanueva in this game, and also impressive with his passing and assists. Villanueva for the second consecutive game with 14 rebounds, a season high. He had 14 points to go along with it. You mentioned the four assists. That's a career high for the sophomore for Brooklyn. When he was double and triple teamed inside, he took care of business and found his, his teammates. Also doing it offensively by himself, crashing the offensive boards, using his length. An absolutely great game for Villanova. Comes on the heels of a great Great game at Oklahoma. Two double doubles in a row. Six blocks as well in this one. Charlie played well. Charlie Villanueva averaging 15.6 points per game in his last six. Comes up with 14 points and 14 rebounds. UConn wins by 14. 78-64. I'm Bob Picosi. Bob Wenzel standing by with the potent inside combination of Josh Boone and Charlie Villanueva. Potent inside combination indeed. Great game today, Josh. You did it great on, on the boards and with block shots. Coming off the Oklahoma game, what was your preparation like for this one? It was really just, you know, I, I just needed to get back to doing what I was doing, you know. Against Oklahoma, I had, I had one of my worst games in my career, so I realized that, you know, I just got to go back to basics, you know, just got to go back to, you know, fighting for offensive rebound, you know, trying to get good position on defense and just really working hard. Well, you did a great job, but the offensive and defensive end, and you're passing, the post-to-post -post passing. Talk to me a little bit about that. That was very impressive between you and Charlie. Hey, you know, Char Charlie's one of the best passers we have. He might be the best passer on the team, you know. He's, he's always looking for his teammates. You know, he's a great scorer, but he's unique in the fact that he can really find people at the same time. So. No doubt about it. Thank you, Josh. Charlie, great game today. You had a double-double against Oklahoma in a loss. You have a double-double against Rutgers in a win. How are you feeling about it? I'm feeling good, you know, but I'm, uh, I got to let, let this momentum carry and carry on to the next game. Okay, tell me a little bit about the passing. I mean, we're very impressed with your scoring, but it seems like you get this big smile on your face when you do this passing, when you're double teamed in the post. you have eyes behind your head or what? You know, that's one, one, one thing about me. I'm versatile. And um, you know, pass, God bless me with a little bit of passing ability, and I'm definitely using it. Well, tell me a little bit about early in the year you weren't playing as well in these last five or six games, seven games, actually, you're really, really playing well. Well, I just try to buckle down, you know, play as hard as I can. You know, I got into a little slump in the beginning of the season, but um, I just kept fighting and I stayed with it, and it's definitely working out for me. Right. So congratulations on a great game. Continue to stay with it. Thank you. Good luck, Charlie. Bob, back to you. A great game by the inside guys of Connecticut. Indeed, Josh Boone with 20 points and 12 rebounds. Charlie Villanueva, 14 points, equal to season high with 14 rebounds and a career high four assists. UConn now two and one in the league. Things. 864 win over Rutgers. Josh Boone with one of his seven block shots and Charlie Villanueva with two of his 14 points. Welcome back to the Hartford Civic Center. Bob Picosi along with Bob Wenzel. So Bob, UConn had lost two out of three games entering today's game. They had lost to Boston College and Oklahoma sandwiched around a win over Georgetown. I think at this point in the season, the question for UConn and the coaching staff is how do we manage to put together back-to-back -to -back solid performances? Because the one thing that's been missing from UConn this year probably is consistency, not only from game to game, but within each game from beginning to end. Well, you know, they're, they're, they're young. You, you hear this mantra a lot, but but that's what happens. You go to Oklahoma, they're a very, very good team, a good physical team, and you're not going to win every game, you know, and you're not, this team's not going to win every game. 
But when you talk about two guys playing well together, the two post guys were just fabulous tonight. Now, they're tall. They're long. They're going to get block shots. They're going to score. But they're not the most physical guys. But they can get away with that. Nelson comes in and gives them that physical prowess if they need it. And he played his best game against Oklahoma. The thing that I think about these guys that they need the most is more consistent outside shooting. they got a lot of elements. But Rashad Anderson and Denim Brown are going to have to pass the ball, number one, better, and then also shoot better. Busy day in the Big East. This just one of five games. Pittsburgh with a close one at home. Syracuse remains unbeaten in the league at 4-0. Villanova with a two-point second-half lead over Georgetown. And Notre Dame with a four-point lead over St. John's with 9.20 left tomorrow in the Big East. And you're headed for, to Morgantown to do that one, Bob. Boston College at West Virginia. The Eagles 13-0 in the league. No doubt about that. And West Virginia really lost to a, a tough one to Marshall. National scores right here. You're looking at two teams that will be in the Ooh, Big East next year. Louisville wins on the road. And Oklahoma State, Eddie Sutton's team ahead. And the big game, Wake Forest up big on North Carolina at home. Texas number nine in the country. Iowa not playing well since they got ranked. So UConn improves its Big East record to 2-1, 10-3 overall. They will visit Seton Hall Monday. Rutgers drops to 6-7, and 0-3 oh and in the league, and they'll host Providence on Wednesday. A big day for Rudy Gay. He had 14, Villanueva 14, Josh Boone 20. So for Bob Wenzel, I'm Bob Picozzi. Thanks so much for joining us, and so long from Hartford, where UConn defeats Rutgers by a score of 78-64. This game is produced and distributed by ESPN Regional Television, Incorporated. Gardens.